Hello everybody, this is Refresh and I am here to take a look at the Ajani Planeswalker deck from Magic the Gathering's Core Set 2020. According to the back here, we have Ajani Inspiring Leader. Ajani is renowned for his courage and compassion in equal measures. Gain life faster than your opponents can take it away, then turn the tide as soon as they run out of gas. You get a deck box, 60 card deck that you can play tabletop or online, which means you get a code for Arena. One 15 card booster pack, a strategy insert, and two reference cards. Let's go ahead and open this up and take a look at what's inside. Here is our Ajani Inspiring Leader. He is a six mana five loyalty planeswalker, and he has a plus two. It says you gain two life, put two plus one plus one counters on up to one target creature. Minus three exile target creature, its controller gains two life. And minus ten. Creatures you control gain flying and double strike until end of turn. So a pretty powerful planeswalker. You get to power up your creatures, you get to remove creatures, and gaining flying and double strike is almost kind of like winning as long as you have creatures to attack with. Here is our Johnny deck box with some rad Johnny art on it. Let's open it up. Inside we get one booster pack for course at 2020. This is our strategy in search, which will remind us to play with the deck a bit before we open up the booster and update it. For playing the deck, it says Ajani is a masterful defender who always knows the perfect time to turn the table on his foes. Grow your board state while gaining enough life to make your opponent's attacks pointless, profiting from life gain synergies as you go. Then when your opponent has wasted most of their resources, mount your own attack and take them out. Now, this is a very generic description of how to play magic. <laughs> you could apply this to almost everything except for the life gain synergies. And some of these words are not very easy to understand for beginning players, like growing your board state. That is a very specific word that I think a lot of beginning players won't understand. And so I feel like this is not exactly the best description of what you're supposed to be doing and as usual I would prefer that there is a full deck tech here that tells you which cards are used for which purposes and why. It also gives you some more information on the mechanics that are included in the deck and I think these also all have reminder text on the cards itself so there this is not that useful but I guess it's there as a reminder. For Ajani Inspiring Leader, though he has faced many hardships in his long life, Ajani Goldmane has never become bitter or vengeful. Now, I'll take issue with this vengeful thing because there was literally a Planeswalker card for Ajani that was Ajani Vengeant, but anyway. Instead, he devotes his life to aiding and empowering those weaker than himself through his healing magic and martial prowess. Under his guidance, even the smallest force can steal victory from the jaws of defeat. This is a pretty generic description of Ajani. It, you could almost replace that with any White Planeswalker, which makes this a very poor description of Ajani. I kind of wish that there was a bit more story for him in this. On the back, we have a little bit of information on how to play Planeswalkers, and that's it. There's no ads here, which is a nice improvement. Now let's open the deck and take a look at what's inside. All right, Ajani's rare is a Loxodon Life Chanter. It is a 4-6 Elephant Cleric. It says, when Loxodon Life Chanter enters the battlefield, you may have your life total become the total toughness of the creatures you control. And then for 5 and a white, Loxodon Life Chanter gains plus X plus X until end of turn where X is your life total. This is definitely a bomb if you can have creatures on the board because it gains your life and then the Life Chanter becomes enormous. And so, very powerful card. like it a lot in decks that can gain life. Then we have Goldmane Griffin, a 3-2 for 5 mana with Flying and Vigilance, and it says, You may search your library and or graveyard for a card named Ajani Inspiring Leader. Reveal it and put it into your hand. And it looks like they have gone back from the cards that just flip over the top X cards to look for a white card and replaced it with the actual tutor for the Planeswalker, which is good. I think this makes the Planeswalker deck feel more like you have the Planeswalker available and you can play it more often. So I like this. I also like this in general because you have a 3-2 Flying Vigilance creature and that's already a decent card. And it's a little expensive, but the fact that it fetches up Yajani kind of makes it worthwhile. And so that's a pretty good rare that's a pretty good tutor of all the tutors that we've seen so far. 
We also have Sarah's Guardian, which is a 6 mana 5-5 five five with flying and vigilance and gives the other creatures you control vigilance. This is the rare that comes with the welcome decks, and so this is not exactly a cool inclusion by any stretch of the imagination. I don't like it. I kind of wish that there was something more specific from the M20 set that was included instead. Savannah Stage appears to be a Johnny's Common, and it's just a 2-2 two, two for 2, but it gains you 2 life when it enters the battlefield, which in a life gain deck, this is a good thing. Twin Blade Paladin appears to be a Johnny's Uncommon, and it is a 3-3 three, three Human Knight, and it says whenever you gain life, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Twin Blade Paladin, and as long as you have 25 or more life, Twin Blade Paladin has Double Strike. So this is a pretty powerful card for any deck that can gain life and works very well with this advantage stage that we just saw before. And so I like this. I like that the uncommons are no longer linked to having the planeswalker on the battlefield too. And then we have our reference cards. We have a little bit of information about attacking and blocking, the phases of the turn, a bit more information about planeswalker loyalty and then how combat damage works. I like this because this is a lot more informative than the previous reference cards, which had a lot of kind of useless information for beginners. This really helps parse out all the different, more complex interactions that players might find while playing the game. The popular magic formats is not the most useful thing. I think that this is better suited for more mechanical cards, like how to read a card, which this is lacking, because you just bought a Planeswalker deck. You're not going to be playing any of these formats if you're just getting, getting this. And then here's the code for the deck in Arena. I've already redeemed this, so don't bother trying to do so yourself, but I will also be playing with this deck online in Standard to see how well this deck fares. All right, I'm gonna play some games with this and I'll be back with some thoughts. So I played some games with this deck and I have some thoughts. The first thing is that this deck and the rest of the 2020 Planeswalker decks really shows a dedication from Wizards to really improving Planeswalker decks. We saw that a little bit in War of the Spark and this is, again, pretty apparent here. Most of the cards in this deck actually have something to do with the theme of the deck, and the deck is actually constructed towards some sort of meaningful goal, as opposed to just a loose collection of themes from the set that somewhat tie into the Planeswalker. In this particular case, with the white deck, life gain is the theme. You see that in almost all the cards, not all the cards, but almost all the cards. You have your payoff cards, like the Angel of Vitality and the Twin Blade Paladins, both of which become really good if you have 25 or more life, and then you have a lot of ways of getting life. You have the Impassioned Orders, you have Savannah Sage, you have Daybreak Chaplain, which has lifelink, you have the Dawning Angels, which gain you life when they enter the battlefield, and you have a Johnny himself, which also gains you life, as well as Moment of Heroism, which gives your creatures lifelink. And so all these things come together towards a package of trying to gain life and trying to benefit from that life gain, using that life gain also as a cushion towards winning an aggressive game. As you can see, there are a lot of two mana spells. In fact, they make up probably more than half of the deck. And the other thing about this deck that you can see that really makes this a significant improvement over previous Planeswalker decks is that there are a lot of four ofs in this deck. There are four Savannah Sages. There are four Moments of Heroism. There are four Daybreak Chaplains here. And even if there aren't four of them, there are three ofs of a lot of the payoffs in the deck. And so the construction of the deck is far better than previous Planeswalker decks, and you really can tell when you're playing with the deck. Is everything perfect? No. There are some weaknesses with the deck. For example, the Fencing Aces, they are not that great in this deck because there's only one way to give your creatures a permanent stat boost, and the Fencing Aces are only really good if you can give them a permanent stat boost, and that's a Johnny Inspiring Leader. Sure, they're better than having a standard 2-2 in the mix, but they're not that much better than having a standard 2-2 in the mix. And so they're not that impressive. And neither are the Goldman Griffins. Yes, they do search out Johnny, but no, they don't really play towards the long-term goal of the deck. And so aside from its ability to search out a Johnny, they're just three twos with flying. And the Dawning Angels sort of do the job better because they gain you four life when they enter the battlefield. The other real disappointment with the deck is the inclusion of Sarah's Guardian, which is the free card that you can get in the welcome deck. 
and here it is as one of the two rares in this deck and it actually doesn't play at all towards what this deck is trying to do and it's very expensive now as you can see the curve is very low here and so what the deck should be doing is trying to move towards being more aggressive and just winning on the back of these angels of vitality and twin blade paladins and so even the Dawning Angel is a little bit expensive, but now that we have the Gold Main Griffin and the Sarah's Guardian, it just feels like these cards could have been cut down to really point towards a deck that you want to get attacking with earlier. The Loxodon Life Chanter, on the other hand, even though it is an expensive card, is a really good payoff for having a lot of life, and it gains you a lot of life. And so I think this does fit fairly well, although I would have preferred that this deck just cut some of these expensive spells and then pushed towards being a more aggressive deck. But even considering some of these weaknesses, I think that this is still a fairly fun deck and if you like life gain and getting payoffs for life gain and being aggressive, I think that this deck for a Johnny inspiring leader is going to be a decent pickup for you, especially if you want to play a constructed deck that you can push more towards the theme that's presented here initially. And I think that the construction of the deck with so many expensive spells and like nothing really in the 3 and 4 section here does mean that you do need these 25 lands that are in this deck, although really I think you could get away with 24 lands, but if you had cut some of these more expensive cards out for cards that are more in the 3 and 4 range and kept your payoffs limited in the expensive cards and you could cut another land or two and really push towards aggression because this deck doesn't have a lot of card advantage and so you're really trying to win the game while you can and there's no certainty how long you're going to be able to keep the 25 life or more with these creatures and so I think it's important that this deck focus a little bit more on being aggressive and keeping a lower curve and keeping a tighter curve and if it were doing that I think that this deck would be a fairly solid one overall but I think the misses keep this from being an excellent deck, but it is still a very good deck, much better than the Planeswalker decks of yore. Have you played with this deck? Let me know what your thoughts are about it in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button. If you'd like to see more such videos, hit subscribe. This was Refresh. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.